What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a Facebook ads walkthrough where I'm just gonna be explaining the concepts behind everything. I'm going to explain what every button means and if you have no idea what to do when you get back here, if this thing scares you, I promise at the end of this video, it's all gonna make a lot of sense because Facebook ads manager, uh, Amazon backend as well, both of these huge companies, their seller side of things is, uh, very, uh, it's not user friendly. It's not user friendly when you first get in there, but it's kind of like if you go to college for the first time and you go on campus and uh, you're like, I'm never going to figure this place out. That's, there's so many buildings. I'm, I'm never going to figure this out. And then after like a couple weeks, you've got the campus down. So it's kind of like that. Like once you get it, you get it. And my goal on this one, uh, this video is just to help you get it really well. So let's go ahead and just jump right in here. We're going to go into making an ad. If you need help on what your ad should be, I'll link a video at the end that can help you with that. But on this one, I'm just going to explain what every button does. So there's this new thing right here where they're really trying to simplify everything, right? Make more automatic options. And I'll just say first thing, Anytime Facebook gives you the option to run an automatic versus a manual version of a campaign, you're going to want to choose the manual. And the reason why they do automatic is because a lot of businesses freeze up when they get back here. So they just are trying to simplify it so they don't lose a lot of money from businesses never being able to start their ads from confusion of what to do. But you give them a little bit too much control in most cases. And, uh, you know, I'll explain it a little bit more along the way, but just know that that's kind of like going to be our default answer throughout this whole process. If it gives us an automatic option, we're just probably not going to do it. So to start then, we're going to click on take tour so that we can see all of the options. So there's essentially three different types of campaign categories that we can do. Awareness, consideration, or conversion. So the awareness is just like it sounds. We're just going to get this message out to as many people as possible for the lowest cost. Consideration, these are more you know, lead generation, which would be someone filling out a form. I'll explain all these individually. Engagement, people who are likely to like or comment on a post. Traffic. Uh, people who are likely to click a link is what that means. Conversions is they're going to go through a couple steps or catalog sales would also be a couple steps. So if you're trying to go for purchases, that would be a conversion. If the, the call to action of the ad you're going to create is, hey, go ahead and buy this from the website, then you would do conversions optimize your own purchases. So I'll dive more into that. Uh, but that's essentially the three differences here. Going into each one, brand awareness versus reach. So this is kind of hard to understand exactly what it means, but I'm going to give you my best impression uh, of, of what it does. But I will also say that it's very rare that you'll run either of these type of campaigns if you're a small business. Brand awareness is something that a lot of companies like Coca-Cola do. And you don't have to be that big to you know, for brand awareness campaign to be worth it. But what that means is you're really just promoting some kind of content or just some kind of ad without a call to action on it. You're not saying buy this now, it's on sale on our website or give us your email or literally anything. You're not even saying follow us probably. It would just be like Coke running a polar bear commercial and they're drinking the, the Coke and then that's it. And you're like, can I even click anything? And it's like, no, I can't click it. All right. That's like a brand awareness campaign. So for that to be the first campaign objective a small business has that is still trying to test their offers or you know get sales right now because they're like, look, I don't even have any sales right now. We just want to see if our website works, you're going to go right for the low hanging fruit and you're going to be going for more sales or at least collecting a lead from these people so that you can keep the ball rolling rather than say, let's do a brand awareness campaign and then hopefully they buy in seven years. Okay. So reach is just show to your ads to the maximum number of people for as cheap as possible. So what you need to understand as we move from left to right here is so like, why would you want to do like if, hey, show ads to the, as many people as cheap as possible, why would you ever want to do anything else, right? It's because the people that are cheap are those who aren't being marketed to very much. So Facebook and Instagram ads works as an auction system. And that means that if you're marketing to a demographic uh, or you know, more so a psychographic that has a specific interest that has a lot of people that are selling to them right now, then the auction will go up. So as more people enter, the price goes up to advertise to those people. And if you're uh, you know, marketing in a, an industry where there's not a lot of sellers already there, 
then it would be pretty cheap. So I, I used to run an aquarium e-commerce company, and there's not a lot of people running ads around aquarium products because a lot of them are too cheap to make Facebook ads work. Uh, but for that reason, we it was very cheap. But that also means that when there's not a lot of people advertising to that group of people, there's probably a reason. So what I, I've seen is that usually the markets that have the very high click-through cost, like the click rate costs, usually do better because those click rate costs are so high for a reason. That is a very hungry market and they're buying and they have money and a lot of good things. So when I would do like on the far right here, conversions, this would be saying, show my ad to people who purchase stuff, all right? I don't want you uh, looking at people that, let me just stick with the aquarium example here, who like fish videos, all right? People who like v fish videos is who the brand awareness one is going to show to because they don't really buy stuff online. They don't interact uh, with posts. They don't enter leads because they aren't all these other things. So they don't have to be. They just have to be a person at all is what reach means. As long as they like fish videos, just show them it, all right? And then this one in the middle, traffic, all of these are around the same kind of line of uh, a about the same level of call to action that we're trying to get out of the customer would be to like click a link, all right? So this would be like, these people are, maybe they're like low level aquarists, they don't buy that much stuff, but they'll go to your website, they'll shop around, but they're not known to buy much stuff is essentially who you're telling Facebook to show the ad to in this traffic example. And then with conversions, you're saying, I know this is gonna be more expensive to show to these people, but hey, if they don't buy, they don't buy. So just show it to the people that are most likely to buy, that have a track record over your decade plus of tracking people's activity online, that they are very likely to buy something, or you could do a conversions objective for entering an email opt-in if you have like a free ebook and you want to optimize around people who are likely to do said action and have downloaded a bunch of free ebooks online because people who download ebooks download ebooks. So it's also in you know, a habit that you can target people off of rather than just that they're just interested in that market. So in every situation, whatever you want is what you want to tell Facebook you want. If you want convert like purchases, but you're like, yeah, but I don't want to spend for the, the extra, the extra amount for these more high quality customers. Let me just do reach. It will not only show to as many people as possible, but th those people that it will show to will not ever be part of the conversions audience because they are not the cheapest people to show to. So it will like purposefully be showing your ad to people who don't buy stuff online. So if you're really like, hey, we're just trying to get followers and we don't, we don't care if these people buy in 10 years. We just want a bunch of followers for the cheapest cost then that is more where you're doing like a reach campaign. Brand awareness, again, is just like, hey, we're Coca-Cola. You know, we could just go real far with it and we don't really need to tell people, go down to your local 7-Eleven and it's $3.99 for three Cokes right now. We can just have the polar bears, right? But you're not at that point yet. You wanna make sure that your product sells. So most of you won't be doing these left categories, um, but why would you choose traffic for versus conversions? The main reason is, if you feel like you have enough data to tell Facebook you are looking for a conversion yet. So for instance, if I had a new ebook and I was running uh, a bunch of ads to get people to download that ebook and then, uh, but I only had like two people who had ever downloaded it, Facebook doesn't really have enough info to know how to optimize around that conversion, right? Because when we do a conversion, we'll say, it will say, what do we want us to get them to do? And we'll say, download the ebook. And they'll say, okay, we've got two people who have downloaded it before. So people like them, right? We're like, yeah. And those two people have totally different demographics and there's no pattern that really uh, emerges to tell Facebook. So for that reason, sometimes running a traffic campaign in this ebook example, but until you have 20, 30, 40 downloads might be a good way to get the ad running a little bit quicker because you'll show to more people for less in the traffic campaign and then it can kind of figure out who your people are and then you can say, all right, now show to the more expensive people. That would be like one reason why someone would do it. 
really in most cases, a conversions campaign is what you're gonna wanna do if you're looking for leads or you're looking for sales. And like I said, you probably should be. Now, what is this lead generation one though? This one, use forums, calls, or chats to gather info from people interested in your business. So this is where they don't have to click to go to an external website to fill out a lead form. And it actually is a really great way to do it. So if you're looking for an email, if you don't have like this landing page that explains so much stuff about your product and you are okay with a very simple form on Facebook and you can add some descriptions and stuff like this, the businesses that use the lead generation form the most are going to be uh, service-based industries. If you do roof repairs, interior design, such like that, those more professional services, especially to homeowners, are most commonly using the lead generation campaign. So that's what I feel like it's a little bit more warmed up to naturally. Um, but if you feel like, hey, like this is simple, I just want to grab a lead and I don't want to even make them leave Facebook or Instagram. When they click lead generation campaign, like if they're seeing the ad and they click it and it pops up, it won't like go to essentially Safari within Instagram to bring to a landing page, which takes loading time. And anytime there's loading time, you have people leaving. This form will just instantly pop up and it'll have all of their information filled. And then they can just click submit. And then you can set that up for whatever email sequence to start uh, or however you have it. So a lot of times if you are doing leads, I mean, anything that you're like, which one would be better? The only answer is always going to be test it. If you're not sure, if you're like, look, I'm just going for the ebook downloads. I don't know if the conversions or the lead generation would work. A lot of times you would just set one of them up, then you would copy the entire campaign and simply the only thing you would change is this objective, all right? The initial objective that you give them. So before I actually click one of these, um, <clears throat> oh, let me see if there's anything else. App installs, if you're selling, if you're doing an app, do that one, okay? That's people likely to download an app. Video views, if you're just, that's more of a brand awareness though, right? You're like, hey, I don't even care if they click. I just wanna make sure they watch the whole videos. It's gonna show it to people who have a high attention span on Facebook and Instagram is what that means that are likely to watch videos to their fullest. Uh, and then messages is if you would want a Facebook message uh, to get started uh, or a message on Instagram. So if like the thing is like, hey, DM me this, word if you want some help with this then you could try to run a messages campaign and see how that works um, but like i said whatever you actually want tell that to facebook there's not a tactical way to get cheaper uh instagram ads really i kind of joked about that on my instagram recently through a reel is why it's kind of funny i'm saying that but there's not really like a cheaper way to get instagram ads through like a tactical hack uh, by you know screwing with Facebook and Instagram uh, without it hurting you at this point because their data is so accurate that you just telling them what they want, uh, what you want is how to get what you want. So let's explain these three tabs because once you understand these three levels of the ads, you'll actually understand how to run ads on a lot of different uh, ad platforms. A lot of it is set up like this into these three different tiers. So campaign, all that is is simply what is the goal of this campaign? If you're running a social media giveaway and you're running it in June, you'd call it a June social media giveaway. If you're running a Black Friday sale, you'd call it Black Friday sale 2022. If you're running a an ongoing campaign that you want these ads to just be going all the time, you could call it ongoing cold ads. Whatever the marketing objective is, you just literally are gonna title it that. And when we get into creating the, the campaign, I'll actually do that just because it's so uh, easy. I'm just going to do, I'll do a conversions campaign because that's what most of you are going to do. And then I'm going to click on sales. All right. So if the call to action of your ad is going to be that your product is on sale, whether you're doing a discount or you're just trying to get someone to buy it, then you're going to want to click that. So let's click sales. At this campaign level, there's only so many objections. So let's say that this is my summer sale 2022 all right that's like an ad campaign that's going to run for one month uh between june and july and i'm going to try to sell a bunch of clothes during that time so categories you're not going to do this likely these are special ad categories very few people are going to fall into these so you can just ignore this tab buying type auction 
most of the time you can't even change it. So yeah, you're going to do that. <laughs> Campaign objective sales, we had already selected that before. Catalog, you're not going to do in almost every case. All right. This is this is a way that people who don't want to get creative and make like their own ads and stuff. This is kind of like a cop out to like turn this on so they can just have whatever catalog they have on their product shop just kind of like displayed here. It's just another like shortcut for Facebook to be like, just get your ad out quick, right? So let's not do that. A B testing. It is very important to split test. Do not do it through this way. I'm going to show you how to split test, how to set that up. Uh, once we get to the ad level, you're not going to want to click A B test. The reason why is because it gives Facebook too much control over which of your ads get the budget. You want to remain um, giving yourself the manual control in a lot of these cases to turn them off at will. And also with the A B test, it will be like, how do you, long do you want to run this test? And you'll say this many days. And let's say you say five days. And after three days, you can already see clearly who the winner is. Facebook will be like, it's not over yet. Don't stop it. And you're like, I already see who won. And Facebook is like, yeah, but you told us you wanted us to test it for five days. And you're like, I did, but now it's day three and I can already see who the winner is. And you're making me want to complete this campaign. So it just gives away control. Don't do it. Campaign budget optimization. I'm going to come back and explain this one. It will be easier to explain after that. Okay. But basically the campaign is the first level. Ad set is the second level, which exists under the campaign, and under that is the ads, all right? So the ad set, all it is, is the audience that it's showing to. The ad set is comprised of two components. Who are we showing this to, and where are we showing it, okay? Who are we showing it to, and where are we showing it to uh, them? And what this ad name will be, you actually won't want to set it at the beginning because, uh, you know, unless you already know exactly who you're going to target. But most of the time, you're going to come in here and make an audience. So I'm just going to make a very quick mock-up audience, actually. Um, custom audiences, I'll explain that in a different video. So be sure to subscribe if you like my ex explanations today. I'll be coming out with lots of tutorials. And like I said at the very end of this, if you want to get started on your first Facebook ad, you can watch that video. Um, I have a free course on running face on running Instagram ads too that I'll, I'll link in the description. So lots more that I can help you with, but let's stay focused on this video. Come on, I know you want more content from me. I know that's what you were thinking, but focus guys. So custom audiences is uh, going to be more like audiences that you say like, hey, run it to my Instagram following, run it to my Facebook following, run it to my email list. It's more of a manual input audience. And then detailed targeting is where you're actually going to go. You're going to click on the edit on the side here. Detailed targeting expansion. Reach people beyond your detailed targeting selections when it's likely to improve performance. You're always in every situation going to click off on that. That is saying, hey, just in case you get your audience wrong, can we choose? And that sounds nice and it might get you better ad data. However, if I say, hey, show this ad to people interested in bowling and soccer and volleyball, I don't know what product you'd want to <laughs> do that audience, but it would say, okay, we'll do that, but we'll try football. And maybe football's the one that's getting the conversions, but I won't see that because all I see is it's running to my volleyball, baseball, uh, soccer audience, but then it also says, it says add anything else you want. And because of that, you can never optimize your ads yourself because you don't really know where the data is ever coming from. So always turn off detail targeting expansion. Detail targeting. So let's say I am trying to pinpoint entrepreneurs all right a lot of people try to sell to entrepreneurs this is a b2b one i work with more b2c people I'll, I'll do two all right real quick entrepreneurs a lot of times it's best to just like literally type in the main thing you're looking for okay entrepreneurship but someone interested in entrepreneurship if i'm like trying to sell them a course or consulting it probably isn't nearly like that's not targeted enough right because that's almost all of America. <laughs> um, there's 140 million people listed in that audience in the United States between 18 and you know any age, and there's only 230 million people in America. It's it's like uh, three quarters of America is registered as liking entrepreneurship. That's actually pretty insane. 
But let's say you're like, all right, let's make this a little bit more targeted. What you can do here is click narrow audience. And as you can guess, you can also exclude the audience. So if I ever wanted to say, hey, exclude people interested in entrepreneurship, I'm trying to find people, you know, I, I sell things to people who are interested in uh, their their corporate job. So I want to get people who are not even interested in entrepreneurship at all. Like you, that's how you could do it, right? That's another thing that you could do, but we're going to narrow it. And what that means is you essentially create a Venn diagram. So let's say entrepreneurship, and then they have to like, we'll pick uh, an influencer, Grant Cardone. Wow, he's not on here. Is that for real? I thought he totally was. I could have sworn I've seen him in the past. All right, let's just put Gary V, I guess. Gary Vaynerchuk. All right, they have to be interested in entrepreneurship and Gary Vaynerchuk. And that got it down quite a bit, actually, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it got it down a ton, right? And then you could say, I want to make sure they're even more active. I'm going to give you guys one extra like secret hack for businesses. So you could actually do something like this business page. I'm getting way too much into making an ad. I know I, I'm just going to do this one example. Sorry, business page admins or Facebook page admins or small business owners, right? So like read that people who list themselves as small business owners or own small business pages on Facebook. Cool. That would probably be an active business owner should have a Facebook page, right? Perfect. Now they're interested in entrepreneurship, Gary V and they have a small business page, 380,000 of them. Okay, that would be the who in this situation. And the reason why I gave this example is how to title the ad set. Entrepreneurship with Gary Vee with small business owners. So what I would do, so that you can keep your ad very clean, you just come back here, and now is the time you title the ad set name. Gary Vaynerchuk. <clears throat> business page. Okay. So then when I'm look, comparing my data, I can clearly see who it's showing to. I'm not going to name this like cool audience four or like, you know, American audience one. You want to be able to check like at the level without diving in here when you're lo looking at your ads on a grander scale that, you know, w what exactly is winning and, and what's not. So we're going to do that. You can set languages. You know, if you're like, you know, I just want to make sure they speak English, like even though it's not going to go down much. You can see 380 there. You can click English all, and that's going to go down to 378, right? So 2K people off, but hey, why not? Uh, if you're going to write your ad in English, you want to make sure that they could read it. And then down here, automatic placements versus manual. So based on what I said before, which one do you think we want to pick? Manual. And the reason why is because uh, automatic placements would show on every one of these locations. Now, it's not that it would just spread out your budget evenly and you know show your uh, ad in article and on apps and sites and on reels and, and on stories as much as feed it will figure it out like it'll figure out where it belongs eventually but it's better if you already know where you made it for to just tell Instagram where this ad belongs if you made a one by one piece of content like this for an Instagram feed and the caption is very important for people to even understand what the ad has going on for it. Should it appear here on the Facebook right column where there's only like one sentence of the caption? Probably not. You're like, it wouldn't be effective there. And I know that, right? So don't tell Facebook, yeah, just put it everywhere and you can figure it out from the crappy data. We'll just tell you where we already know it's not going to work, right? So in most cases, you're going to say, you know, I don't want it there. Instagram shop. If you're trying to sell a product, I mean, it looks pretty good right next to a lot of other products. And if they purposefully clicked on Instagram shop and they're shopping, it's a phenomenal place to run ads for sure. If you're selling the product, um, even if you're getting leads, sometimes it's a great spot. Instagram Explorer, usually keep it on. If it's not a video, I'm going to take it down from there. Facebook Marketplace, kind of see that as the same as shop, feed. Um, if it's a one by one ad, I probably don't want it to run on a nine by 16 story, especially because the caption won't show at all, or it will show like four words of it. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. You know, in stream video, reels overlay, this is a brand new one. Whenever they have a brand new thing like this, it means that a lot of businesses probably aren't doing it. And it is a lot cheaper of an ad space. So if you can, if you're like, look, the image is all that needs for someone to click on this, 
you should absolutely run Reels Overlay because that's the newest one at this time, at the time of this recording, April 2022. Uh, so anytime within the next six months even should be one of the bigger opportunities for cheaper impressions just running in these ad spaces where people aren't. Um, search you're never going to want to do because if someone just typed in a search query for like, you know, person from my high school, then they're, and then like they see Jasper's market, it's like, hey, person from my high school I just looked for, but uh, why not check out Jasper's market in the meantime? They're on a freaking mission to like, you know, stalk someone. So let's get off the search page. Then get off in article, get off apps and sites probably you know just go through each one um but yeah you're always going to want to set that now i don't put that in my ad set name but that's all the ad set is guys the campaign what are we doing we're doing a summer sale who are we showing it to we're showing it to entrepreneurs gary v these people and then where are we showing it to them that okay that's all that's happening off to the first two levels there's just a lot of fancy words but now what we're doing is going to the ad level and you can see that i can go between the levels here or I can go between the levels here. So let me click on it. This one this time, right? Okay, so new sales ad. Now, I actually already do know what the name of this one is going to be. And it's going to be <clears throat> content A, caption A. Because that is how we were going to set up for split testing. So it's better to do it in this these cases and then just kind of memorize which piece of content is A and B and C or whatever you would do. And you're always going to have at least, you should at least always go to like content D and caption D probably. And people are like, well, how many? And it's like just as many great guesses as you have is what the answer is. All right. So don't ever ask like how many different, uh, you know, creatives should I test? how many awesome ideas do you have is and you should try all of them is the answer to that but like minimum of four would be like you're not thinking hard enough if you can't think of like four ways to like pitch your ad all right so at least four of those um but let's say that so going down here the ad is just like what is going to show right it's just exactly like what does this look like on instagram or wherever you are allowing this ad to go so let's just say I say a single image or video. That's going to be the first thing, one of the things that you choose. You can also use an existing post from your Instagram and just like run traffic to that, which is very similar to like promoting the post as if you just like clicked promote when you're on Instagram. Um, but I wouldn't do that because then you can't really split test because you can't alter the caption or anything as it is. All right. So if I clicked use existing post, I would just select one of my recent posts from Instagram and then I couldn't even like change it at all from there um, if I wanted to. So you can't do any kind of testing. We're gonna create the ad. The single image is just like it sounds or video, carousel is just multiple. Uh, I don't think you're ever gonna click collection and you're not gonna click dynamic experience because all that is is just like Facebook is kind of like, can we like make it cooler looking? Um, but you're like, we're going to make it cool. Don't worry about it. We don't need your help. So don't allow them to, you know, don't do the dynamic experiences. So we're just going to choose one of my images from recently. This is not my actual ad account. This is just, a, uh, you know, my extra one for tutorials. Not that it matters, but um, I just like to keep it clean back here so there's not just like all this crap and you're like, wait, which one, which one are we working on? So let's say that I wanted to run this terrible copy here. <laughs> this is actually good. This is just like a thumbnail for one of my YouTube videos. Um, one by one is what you're gonna wanna do. I wish you could do four by five still, that'd be awesome. Allow enhancements, I mean, you can like click it to see what it looks like, but I mean, just enhance the image and make it look what it needs to before getting to this step. It's just another you know, way that Facebook is trying to make their app look pretty even on the ad side. Primary text is the caption. Headline is on Facebook. It's this, okay? 
headline is right there where it says headline. The headline is not gonna be uh, involved with Instagram. Uh, it used to be, it used to just add it as the first line of the caption, which was super annoying. Um, but now it looks like it just is going to have it be on the Facebook news feed. Um, so yeah, headline very important. Make sure you watch my tutorial on actually how I recommend creating your first ad before just running them because most businesses are not gonna get great results just trying to throw something random together. I promise you it's uh, very difficult to make these work on a small budget the first time because it means that your ad has to be great, your targeting has to be great, your website has to be great. And a lot of times they just need the, to run ads for a while before Instagram even knows how to be great with your offer. So um, yeah, we can come here. This call to action button is just that button there. Um, but we're getting to the end here, guys. I just want to leave it at that for now. Uh, besides one more thing, actually. So once I create that, let's say I, I wrote my caption, I wrote my content, I made the whole thing. And I want to say, all right, I want to test something against it. What you would do here is you're going to click duplicate. And then just by clicking duplicate again, it's going to add just another ad right here. And then I would just come in here and I'd say, you know what? I want to keep the same piece of content. So I'll keep the same image. But in this one, I'll change the caption. So it's content A, but it's caption B this time. So I come in here and I say, this is the second caption. Now this button right here, this gray X, it says close, it should say save and close. This publish button, if you click that, it's going to manually submit the ad to a Facebook representative to go over the ad, an actual person. If there's anything wrong with it, you could potentially even get an account ban. Um, so this is not save, it is published, right? But this is save and close. So you can click this gray X at any time, right? And then it says all edit saves at the bottom. But that one's content A caption view now, right? I duplicate it and I just change the caption, change the name like that. If I would say, I actually wanna do a different kind of content though too. What I could do now in this case is select both of those, duplicate both of them, and then now you can see on the left side here, I'm, I've got both of them highlighted, right? Both of these new copies of those ads. And then I could say, all I wanna change in this one is the content. Because I really wanted to run my other YouTube thumbnail image. I think this should work. I'm just gonna run the interior of a YouTube thumbnail. Oh, this is a Reels thumbnail, guys. So yeah, right now that's there. And then what I can do is boom, just X because the one of them's content A and one of them's content, uh, co excuse me, the captions are different. Come up here to edit name, get rid of copy, change both to content B. And you can create split testing as simple as that. And then all you do is turn off and on these ads as you see the bad data come in. And um, you don't ever wanna like delete the ad because you wanna have proof of what didn't work. It's really important. So always just turn off that individual ad. And then from here, as you can imagine, all of these ads exist within this ad set. So if I duplicate this ad set, because I wanna say, all right, I'm gonna do one thing different. Instead of Gary Vaynerchuk, I wanna to do Tony Robbins. Don't even tell me Tony Robbins isn't on here. I swear Tony Robbins has been on here in the past and Grant Cardone, so that's kinda of insane. Damn, all right, but you're like, you know what, Tony Romo. The quarterback of the Cowboys, I think that is more my audience here. <laughs> then all you do is that, you change that one thing, you come back, Tony, Romo, get rid of the copy because it's ugly, click on that gray X that's save and close, and boom, it's already done. You already created, now I've got a new test, and guess what exists within that Tony Romo audience? All of the ads right there are from the Tony Romo. All the ads right here are from the Gary V. So there's already eight ads uh, split tested right there. So I hope this all makes sense too of what buttons you'd click. Um, I think there's only one other 
uh, feature that I didn't cover. So I'm just going to cover that just so that this can truly be thorough and then you're good. Um, but uh, also, a lot of these results don't matter. Just focus on cost per result when you're analyzing results is all I'd say because the cost that someone that it takes for someone to like complete the purchase or the email is all that really matters. Don't pay attention to like, well, how much did the initial click cost? Like that doesn't matter, right? Like it's just like, well, whoever's getting me the cheapest sales, whoever's getting me the cheapest leads is the winner, right? Don't worry, like, oh, reach. That's who cho who Facebook and Instagram has chosen to show your ad to so far. High reach doesn't mean it's the ad winning whatsoever, okay? Cost per result is the only number you should really look at when tweaking your ads. The other thing that I was going to say though is at this level, there is something called the attribute, oh yeah, attribution setting, I saw it. And you can't set it with for a conversions campaign, usually it's in traffic campaigns but there is a one day or a seven day window. An attribution setting is basically you telling them with this type of ad, does it usually, does a conversion usually happen the same day that they see the ad or within seven days of seeing the ad and they need to see it a few times. So if you ever get the attribution setting option and you're running a sale ad, you should probably have it set to the seven because not everyone's gonna buy it like the first time they see it. They might have to see the ad a couple times, right? And when you tell Facebook and Instagram that, they know to expect to show it to the customer more often before this conversion should happen. If you're running something like a giveaway or a, a lead collection campaign, which I totally recommend as the first campaign a business run, which I'll show you in the next video, um, then you would click the one day because for someone to enter their email, they don't need to be like, oh, this free ebook, I, I can't decide like all week, I've been trying to decide if I wanna do this or not, right? We don't want Facebook to keep showing the ad to that, peop, that person all week long and try to get them to decide. If they don't do it the first couple times, just leave them alone is more what that's saying. That's the last thing that I would want to tell you about to understand if you ever get asked about attribution setting, you just have the one or the seven day option. There's a couple other little things, uh, don't worry about it, just worry about the one versus the seven. Uh, but that's the ad tutorial, guys. How to set up your first ad in the next video. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Smash all the buttons. Subscribe if you got value. I'm on a climb to a 1,000 at this time. Just hit 900 this morning, and I'm never stopping. So uh, you can be part of the initial army that before this gets you 100,000, or you can join us later. Doesn't matter, but it'll be cool when you can tell people later that you per were part of the first 1,000. So if you want to be one of them, hit the subscribe. Talk to you later.